Hi, I'm Mike. And today we get a chance to use this 20 ton shop press to do a little project on the ranch that may save us big in the long run. It's coming up on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back and thank you very much for continuing along with us as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary each and every week right here on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and all those good places where you can find us, including our newsletter that you can sign up for on our website, ourwarminglife.com. So today I want to, uh, first of all, thank you for coming, which I guess I already did, so I'll do it twice. Uh, second of all, we have a, a little project that I want to work on and I wanted to bring you along with because we have some new tools that we're going to use here on the ranch, tools that I haven't ever had before and tools that I think uh, will be able to uh, help us out quite a bit as we tackle a project that's actually a very, very small deal. It's not a it's not moving the cows, it's not branding, it's not vaccinating, it's not pulling a calf, it's, it's nothing like that. It's, it's a small piece of equipment. Uh, well, I, I shouldn't say it's a small piece of equipment. It's a small piece on a rather large piece of equipment, but it's a small piece that does really make a difference throughout uh, the year here on the ranch. And, and as we move into fall, it's a great time to actually go and kind of kind of do a little bit of touch up maintenance on this thing and make sure that, uh, that everything's gonna work okay. Now, in the past, I haven't been able to do this uh, here on the ranch. And I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna show you where we're gonna be doing it because I do have a new little area set up uh, where we can do some metal work and that kind of stuff. So I'm going to show that to you, and, uh, and then we're going to talk about, about what we're doing, and more importantly, why we're doing it. Let's go this way. This door here leads us out to the sales barn, which is now becoming more than just a sales barn. I'm, I'm kind of moving in. So space here on the ranch, uh, especially inside buildings, can be very, very limited. And this sales barn, which we've talked about hundreds of times in the past, has really been mostly for storage uh, because it's not heated, uh, mostly just a dirt floor. There is some concrete in here, but it's, it's mostly been just for storage. And a portion of that storage actually was kind of wasted because there was areas like right over where I'm standing that we weren't able to actually get anything into. And if we could get something in here, we could never get it out. So it's with that thought in mind, um, the thought of wasted space that I decided to kind of take just a little tiny corner here of the sales barn. And when I say a small corner, I mean a pretty small little corner. With winter storage coming up in the sales barn, uh, it's a matter of squeezing as much stuff in here as possible. I've already got the baler uh, set up. That's right there. Uh, I've got the 4055 already stashed away. Uh, we've got the lawnmower. I've got a ton of feed there. Uh, that's gonna have to come out, some old scaffolding. Uh, we've got Aaron's vegetable washer, which I don't know what I'm gonna do with. The Model T is here, four wheelers. All kinds of stuff is just jammed in here right now, and I really don't have any rhyme or reason, but eventually we have a lot of stuff that's gonna end up coming in here uh, for the winter, and this is where we keep it out of the weather during the winter months here on the ranch. But one thing I realized is that I needed a spot to work. Now we do have the shop, uh, which is heated and very nice. And, and Aaron washes all of her vegetables in there and we do store the tractor that we feed with over there. But it's not, you know, if you're gonna pull something in there, you're gonna change oil, you're gonna do something like that. That's a great place to do it. But what I needed was a spot where I could do metal work, where I could, uh, you know, weld and all that kind of stuff without being in the main shop and, and without being in the way of everything, especially some of the welding projects that I do, especially over the winter, do end up kind of being a little bit longer. So what I have here is basically a little area that I think will work great for this. And I'm going to show you a couple reasons why. First of all, uh, with the help of my friend Jeff, I ended up getting the kind of like this U set up and, and it's kind of the same, uh, same thing within like any kitchen or anything like that. There's definitely a layout that you want to have. So in here, uh, we've got uh, grinding wheels and, and over here, uh, this is a, uh, a small plasma cutter. I've got a cutoff wheel. I've got a welding bench over here. And the nice thing about this is the way that it's set up is it's set up in a U, but I can do anything that I need to. I've got a, an area here that's about six foot by about 12 foot that if I'm building something, I can build it here. And then the really nice thing is that when it's time to take it out, I can go out this garage door directly into the shop and 
be able to move stuff in and out without having to move all the equipment that I shove in here in the winter time. So this is gonna kind of become a little working area. I hope that we can get some work done in here over the winter and we're gonna start that uh, today as I get a chance to kind of kind of feel it out and see how it's gonna work. Our project for today is this, the bucket of the tractor. Not really, not, all, not the bucket. I guess I shouldn't say the bucket. We're talking about teeth. These are uh, grapple teeth on the grapple bucket. The bucket itself, obviously down below. This top part is called the grapple. It opens and closes and uh, we can grab whatever we need to with it. We can grab bales, we can grab um, materials, fence posts, all that kind of good stuff. And one of the big things that we did with it this year was we tore out the old corrals, which then of course we were grabbing fence posts like crazy. And one of the things that's, that's uh, either good or bad about this is that obviously you have a whole lot of pressure, a whole lot of hydraulic pressure as you're grabbing stuff. Some stuff doesn't want to give, something has to give, and a lot of times it's this, these teeth that actually end up giving. These are breakaway bolts that hold the teeth on, so if something does happen they do break uh, before anything drastic happens. But one thing that happens is that these teeth bend very, very easily, and our goal today is to figure out how to straighten them. But why do we need to straighten them? And I don't know, it's a question that maybe I should ask myself, but uh, the main reason that I've noticed and over the years is that as these things start to bend, uh, they bend more and more. Um, I'm sure that they're a hardened steel. Um, I could heat them up and bend them, but then that makes them fragile. So what we wanna do is work today on bending them back uh, to a flat shape or at least a straight shape and being able to uh, make that work. And we wanna do it without heat as much as possible because there are multiple ways that we could do this. Like I said, we could use heat. I wouldn't use this tip, this is a cutting head, but we could use a rosebud to heat that up and then basically pound the little living crap out of it uh, here on the anvil. But I don't wanna do that. Like I said, I don't want to, de what, would, what would be the word, de-strengthen? I don't wanna weaken <laughs> the, uh, the uh, integrity of those teeth because uh, I'm sure they're expensive if I have to buy another one, number one. And once you start heating stuff up, it does be get, start to be, get brittle and chances of it breaking off are pretty good. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use this piece of equipment. This is a two ton hydraulic press. And basically the gist of it is you put something in here, you crank it or you, well, you, you, you jack this down and then it's gonna bend whatever's in there. So let's see what we have to work with first and then we'll take a look at how this piece of machinery is gonna help us out in, uh, in straightening those teeth. First, we're gonna go ahead and get one off of here. We're gonna take a look and see how bent up this thing really is. It doesn't look that bent when it's on the, the tractor, but once we get it over here on a flat surface, we can see how bent this thing really is. You can see the bend there if I'm laying it flat. So the bend is right in this area. So what we're gonna to try to do first is take the shop press and try to press some of that bend out. The trick is figuring out where that bend exactly starts and ends. And sometimes the only way to do that is to put it on a flat surface and just wiggle it until you can figure out where the bend is. So like right there, we know it's pretty straight. So we know where our bend begins. So I'm gonna just draw a line there on it and see if we can't get this pressed out. So this is a Harbor Freight Special. It's a 20 ton press. And the hope is that it works to press this out. Now it comes with these plates here that you can use so that you can actually over press it. I guess, I don't know what the exact terms of some of this stuff is, but um, if you press this down and through, then eventually it'll, um, it won't spring back as much is kind of the thought process on it. So we're gonna go ahead and bring this down some until we get in contact with that tooth. My uh, birthday's coming up, so one of my things on my birthday list is to actually get an air over hydraulic uh, press to put on here so I can just run it right off the air compressor and I don't have to uh, look like an idiot. Okay, so now I've got pressure up against it and I'm able to 
start bending it slowly. But the trick is gonna be there's actually a twist in this. So that might be a little bit trickier to get out. All right, so there I've actually got it over bent, overextended. So I'm gonna let the pressure off there. See how much that springs back up. So now I can come back over to the bench. And I think what I need to do is start working on this, this twist that's in here. By the way, this press costs about $200, I think, um, but probably well worth it considering if I took this thing into a, um, like a fabrication shop to get it flattened out, probably cost a little bit more than that. So, okay, so I managed to get a lot of the twist out. So that's good. The twist is coming out, I'm thinking. Now, we still have a roly poly oly, which is a high spot right in here somewhere. So if I can press that down, and we'll just keep on going back and forth until we get this thing flattened out. Well, that's pretty dang good. I'd say we almost, I think that's about as close as I'm ever gonna get. So we're gonna go put it back on and then got a little surprise for you. So I promised you a, a little bit of a surprise. And there's this uh, YouTube channel, I don't remember the name of it, but uh, it's like a hydraulic press channel, right? Where they go in and they, they squish stuff. And I uh, thought, well, you know, it might be kind of fun to, to break something, to squish something, to do something totally uncalled for and completely unnecessary. So I started thinking about what could be destroyed and what might be exciting to actually see uh, being pressed in a hydraulic press. And I found this old tape measure. Now, if you know anything about tape measures, which I don't know a lot about tape measures, but I do know that there's a, a coil in here that's under some sort of pressure because obviously they retract. Um, this one has seen better days. It got left outside a few times. It's, it's, uh, it's all gummed up. In fact, if you go a certain point, it won't even go back in. So you have to manually push it back in. Giant pain in the butt. And I figured, you know what? Why not have 25 feet of uh, destruction and, and mayhem to, to end up our, uh, our Tuesday here on the project list. So let's have some fun. You know what, I'm gonna grab some eye protection really quick. I go straight from the bank, gassing up the tank, cranking up the radio, playing old Hank. It ain't that long till I'm back at the pond. I'm pulling up the truck down at the dock. It's time to do some cruising, baby. Get a little stuck, it's a Saturday joy ride. First and least is the spot. We're on a boat, we're feeling fine. Drinking Tennessee whiskey, a big blue sky. We're going up, we're coming down. There's a party on the water, it's a hell. 
Well, that's nice. Yeah, we're chilling out here. I honestly thought that would have some sort of springing action or something going on. So we're going to try putting it between two plates. We all get to dance and I get to dancing, kissing that country girl romancing a whole lot of love, bumping out of the box. Yeah, we're on the boat, we're feeling fine, drinking Tennessee whiskey, a big blue sky. Okay, I gotta squish something. What am I gonna squish? Something's gotta break or pop or make big noise. Preferably not blow myself apart. Be right back. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure that DeWalt is very happy that we made a video that shows that you can smash the crap out of their tape measure and, and it doesn't explode. I don't, it still would never work again. We have to squish something. I need that satisfaction. So what I found, was this, this is a, this is a squishy. <laughs> Literally, that's what it's called. That's what the girls call them. Uh, they are uh, little tiny things that they paint uh, with fabric paint and then they can smush them. Remember stress balls? Kind of like that. So we are gonna smash this little guy. First though, I feel that he needs a face. So let's give him a little face. Doot. One eye, two eyes. A little smiley, see, there we go. All right, into the press he goes. Not quite the satisfaction I was looking for, although it did put a nice hole in it. If you've got an idea for something that we can smash in our little hydraulic press, it's only 20 tons, so keep in mind we're not gonna be smushing anything too crazy, but let me know in the comments below. Thanks for coming along, guys. I really do appreciate it. Today we got to tackle a small problem that could potentially uh, become a bigger problem. So it's nice that we get a chance to nip that in the butt before it uh, causes us any problems where a tooth breaks or uh, possibly even hurt somebody. So very good idea to, to kind of nip those things in the butt when you can. Thanks for coming along, guys. I do appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe, follow along as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Head on over to our website, rwyomylife.com. Be sure to sign up for the newsletter and get all the good stuff that you can't find anywhere else. Thanks, guys. Have a great week. We'll see you next time right here on our Wyoming Life.